Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. This is a game I've actually been wanting to play for a very long time and just never got around to. It's just been sitting in my Steam library since like last September. Now I will admit at first I was a little skeptical about playing this game because it's based on Lord of the Rings, which I know absolutely nothing about. But this game was actually pretty easy to get on board with and while this game doesn't do anything crazy unique, it takes a lot of old formulas and just does them right. This game was released in 2014 and after finishing the game almost 100%, I'm going to break it down and let you guys know if it's worth your money in 2020. Also, before we get into this, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've developed a little bit of a scoring system for these videos now. Basically, I will just place the game into one of three categories, which is either don't buy, wait for sale, or buy it. Pretty simple and direct, so anyways, back to the video. See for yourself. Now the story from Shadow of Mordor is actually fairly simple yet very engaging. You play as Talion, a ranger who's charged with protecting the Black Gate, and one day an army of Uruks and the Dark Lord Sauron's henchmen raid Mordor and either enslave or kill all its people. Now it sounds a little complicated, but trust me, once you get into it, it is very easy to follow. Anyways, Talion and his family are killed by the Black Hand of Sauron. When Talion realizes he's banished from death and his life is bonded with that of a mysterious raid. By the way, that is not a spoiler. I see a lot of you commenting in my other videos that I'm spoiling the games. That is literally just a premise that was even advertised, so calm down. Back to what I was talking about though, this game has an extremely dark story, and while it may sound depressing, it is actually surprisingly refreshing. I feel like too many games now are scared to tell a dark and mature story, and I think the dark tone was such a nice breath of fresh air and it eliminated all those cheesy or cringy moments you may see in other games. This game's story takes itself super seriously and I was really on board with it. Talion's family is killed and he has discovered that he cannot die, so he's on his own path of revenge as he falls deeper and deeper into darkness. Another interesting thing about the story is Talion's alter ego, the Wraith. Seeing the connection between the Wraith and Talion was very cool to see and discovering more about the Wraith's past and how he became bonded with Talion was a very interesting story to unravel. Now obviously there are some flaws with this story. While at first Talion appears charming and likable, he starts to lose those traits as the story further progresses. The supporting cast and side characters are also all pretty forgettable, and there are only a few standout personalities. The main story itself is also very simple, and a little bit too simple if you ask me. There weren't a lot of twists, and the story remained pretty predictable, and there were a lot of moments where it just felt like you were playing in filler moments, just to increase the length of the story. Now when the story does get going, it's pretty good, but again, it's nothing crazy, and when I finished the game, I felt pretty underwhelmed. It's hard to explain, but I feel like it was really building to be something super grand and amazing, and it was just kinda, eh. Sure, the story was overall good, but I don't know, just expecting a little more. Now, let's talk about the mission structure in the game. It's your pretty standard open world system with the main quests and side quests and challenges, all that. Now, the main quests I found to be pretty boring, to be honest. A lot of a lot of it was just follow someone, kill a few enemies, then cutscene. Not to mention the people you follow love to walk at snail's pace, so these main quests often felt dragged out and just kind of boring. Now, the side quests were really where I enjoyed the game. There's missions that will test your skills and combat, archery, and stealth. There's also the outcast missions where you need to free slaves, or missions where you need to invade, kill, or dominate certain captains and war chiefs from the Uruk army. Now I really love these missions, but they are super repetitive. After you do them for a while, they can get really old, and at first I found killing leaders in an army and dismantling them was really cool, but after a while, I just found it to be kind of boring, and every time you kill the captain, a new one takes its place, so there's really no end to it. Which is good for people who may want to play after they finish the story, but it kind of killed the sense of accomplishment and progression. Now sure, the story is decent and all, but gameplay is where this game really shines. The combat is pretty much Batman Arkham with swords, and this was totally fine for me because the Arkham games have one of my favorite combat systems, so I absolutely loved combat in Shadow of Mordor. Sure, it may be a little repetitive, but you're going to get that in every game, and when the combat is this fun and satisfying, it never gets old. There's also quite a decent amount of special powers and abilities that add a fair bit of depth, like a wraith stun or combat drain, 
to create your own personal army. Also, I absolutely loved the executions in this game. They are super brutal and gory and just makes me feel so cool. If you love brutal and quick combat with all lots of stabbing and decapitations, this is your game. And the slow motion camera just makes it that much better. You can also use your wraith bow and arrow, which was also great and surprisingly had a lot of depth to it. There's your simple slow motion headshots along with a shadow strike, which can be chained up to four enemies. You can also use it to instantly mount characters it's all very fun. Now I've seen many people call the stealth in this game basic and I actually completely disagree. The stealth is actually pretty in depth and I'd argue even more in depth than the newer Assassin's Creed games which this game is very similar to by the way. For starters, there's two types of assassination. There's Brutalize, which is a super aggressive and brutal stealth kill that will scare any Uruks in the area and cause them to run away. And then there's also your standard stealth kill, which are the more quick and silent kills. These stealth kills all also all have a lot of animations to them, so it never gets old. In stealth, you can also do a lot of environmental kills. Shooting a bonfire with an arrow will engulf any enemies in the area in flames. Shooting bait will attract Karagors that will eat any Uruks. Shooting grog barrels will cause them to explode, and you can also poison said barrels, which will kill any Uruks who drink from it. There's also ledge and aerial assassinations, along with an attract and distract mechanic that can be used as a lore on the Uruks. Oh, and that's not it. You can also grab enemies and interrogate them, or even stealth brand them so that they now fight for you. Now, granted, you won't get all these cool abilities as soon as you start the game, but it adds a lot of depth and more fun ways to kill enemies as you progress through the game and makes you feel even more stronger. Also, did I mention there's an ability that allows you to go invisible for 20 seconds and get unlimited stealth kills? Now, really one of my only complaints with all the gameplay is that it's easy. Now, in your first hour or two of gameplay, you may die a bit, but once you get the hang of the game, it becomes pretty easy and there's no difficulty setting in it, so there's no real way to make the game any harder. There's even a last chance ability that you unlock that gives you a last chance to survive even when you've lost all your health. So I hardly died during my playthrough, like probably under 10 times. Dinah, you bad Uruks! I get to kill you now! The world of Mordor is a very dark and scary place, and that's what I love about it. The dark and rigid setting perfectly complements the dark story and brutal gameplay. You can just feel death in the air while you're playing, and getting lost in this world is so easy. I completely lost track of time while playing this game, and it was amazing. There's lots of ruins and destroyed towns along with Uruk strongholds, which all feel super real and lived in. You can hear the Uruks talking with each other and just listen to how evil and ruthless they are. You often also even hear them trash talking you saying things like, If I ever saw that grave walker, I'd kill him and feed him to the slaves! Or something like that, which made jumping in and stabbing him in the face super satisfying. This kind of banter is also there with all the Uruk captains and war chiefs who all, all have their own little catchphrases to try and scare or intimidate you. You make me... make me... I'm going to... you're going to... you... just... die! And these all change depending on where you are or if you fought them before. For example, you may kill a captain and then come to find out that he's actually survived. So the next time you meet, he will bring up your last fight. See this pretty scar? That was your doing! This is also true for when the Uruks kill you. If an Uruk kills you, the next time you see them, they will start boasting about their previous victory, which gives you even more good motivation to kill them. Even when some random grunt kills you, they will be promoted and increased in power. Now, sometimes the acting on these Uruk can be a little over the top, but they are basically monsters, so I'll take over the top as opposed to tame. There's even a point later on in the game where you can do something called dominate, where you can control Uruk leaders and send them to assassinate other leaders or work their way up to war chief so you have your own private Uruk army that obeys your every command. It's also worth mentioning there are two regions in this game and they did a good job of making each place feel unique and different from one another. The first region is very dark and brown while the second region is often sunny and green and while the map may look brighter, it doesn't detract too much from that dark tone and it adds a little bit of needed balance. Help her. She's 
I don't know what it is with games from 2014, but they all look amazing for some reason. Shadow of Mordor has some fantastic graphics, and while most of the world is dark, it looks beautiful. Textures are incredibly detailed, especially the faces of the Uruk. Lighting is also fantastic, and just overall, this is a great looking game. For those of you looking to buy this game on PC, the performance is also really impressive. On Ultra settings, I got some incredible frames, like consistently in the 130 to 140 FPS range, which is super impressive for such a good looking game. Not a single crash or stutter during my playthrough either, so it was a very smooth ride all the way through. Now if you are on PC, you're going to want to plug in a controller because not only is it way easier, but there's pr some pretty bad mouse acceleration for some reason that makes playing on keyboard and mouse just a huge headache. But other than that, the PC port is great. Everything is really well optimized and the game looks amazing and could definitely pass as a game from 2020. To recap, Shadow of Mordor has a fairly intriguing and dark story with some incredibly satisfying and smooth gameplay with a great lived in open world. So Shadow of Mordor receives my overall rating of buy it. This game was such a blast to play and a huge refresher for me and I would definitely recommend it to any of you in 2020. The game is often really cheap because of its age and it is so worth it. I can't wait to play the sequel and Shadow of War and go on more stabbing and execution filled adventures. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, a like on the video and subscribe to the channel would be very much appreciated and if you have anything to add or have a game you would like to see me review next please leave your suggestions down in the comments if you also would like to discuss my videos or play co-op with me and others please feel free to join my discord server the link is in the description if you're new to the channel i have a ton more of should you buys like this one you can check those out and other than that thank you all so much for watching and have a great rest of your day